Hello everyone, Martin here, back with another Legacy Doomsday video. Um, today we're reverting back to something a bit more mainstream, I suppose, from the recent Esper videos I've released. This is a, uh, a Turbo Doomsday list, but it's with a twist. So, <clears throat> the list you see before you, um, I ran this through a couple of leagues. I had like a 3-2, I had a 4-1, and I had a trophy, so that was really, really sweet. But I've decided to shake things up a bit. And this comes uh, from a discussion I had on the Doomsday Discord with user Wally. So shout out to you, Wally. Um, Doomsday brother in arms. Um, and it basically is just the fact that I, I personally don't really enjoy playing with the card personal tutor. Um, it has become very much mainstream, so much so that it's, I think, pretty common to have four copies. I know that Max, um, Max Gilmore's list that, uh, took down that big challenge had four copies and that has sort of become kind of, kind of a mainstay. But I, I don't know. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, it obviously is a decent piece of the, the puzzle that is this deck. But the, the, the card disadvantage and the sorcery speed just never really sat that much uh, right with me. And the fact that you can only get Doomsday, like, realistically. Sure, like, in some 1 in, in 100 scenarios, you'll be getting a discard spell. But, like, significantly, you can't get Dark Ritual, which is often the other side of the coin. Like, you might have an opening hand that is, like, one land... A doomsday, some piece of protection, and personal tutor, and then you'd really would just love to get a dark ritual. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do now is actually take a, st take a step back in into the olden days, uh, circa 2020 or 21. I'm going to run a, a single Limdul's Vault in place of one of the uh, personal tutors. So the, the the key difference, well, there are a couple, but from from personal tutor is like one mana versus two, which is obviously huge. Also, like personal tutor gets doomsday; it always gets doomsday. There's never any sort of ifs, ands, or buts about it. So why would you play Limdul's Vault? Well, it's instant speed, and it gets other pieces uh, than just doomsday. That's that's pretty much it. You you're gonna like potentially lose life, which is also a, a downside. So I mean this this is not a great card. It's also a card disadvantage. But the fact that you can like if you have a cycler in hand <clears throat> and a you, you can like Limdul's vault for a force of will basically and cycle into that if you need to survive. So that's why I think like I think in in the best of times and the worst of times, I think Lindell's Vault is pretty... It, it's a fair discussion to have at any point in time whether or not Personal Tutor deserves the, the, the slot over Lindell's Vault or vice versa. And I think you could probably de debate that heavily. I just also feel like maybe it's also a play style thing. Like, I always board out Personal Tutor. Like, whenever I run Personal Tutor, in not all but in like a lot of matchups it's the first card to get cut and i don't know i just like there was a time when i didn't i may i might have run one limbo's vault but i would probably run like a couple of preordains and just i would accept that there is an in inbuilt fail rate that there is like there's like some amount of the time where you can't find doomsday but a lot of the time like all of your cantrips you you'll be able to find doomsday and I'm only running one preordain here, and that's because uh, the card consider was printed. And I, I considered, haha, you know, no pun intended, but I did consider just cutting deep analysis altogether, in which case you'd only want one consider for, um, for those types of brainstorm plus blue mana plus a card in hand piles and the likes. But I do, at the end of the day, think that, like, Consider is probably okay. Like, you power down Preordain to get Consider, but that also allows you 
the synergy with deep analysis and those like you make doomsday you have blue mana f like available and a consider in hand then you just win regardless of what else um i mean obviously not if the opponent can interact but anyways all right so just briefly touching on the sideboard i want to touch on relic of progenitus this is this has been amazing for me so far like since i adopted it it came to me by way of like I think Ethan Formicella with Monkeys Can't Tr Cry, which it, who is just like one of the I think I don't know like unsung hero is is maybe a weird uh, term to put on a person, but I do think that like Ethan, from my perception at least, is like you know when the you talk about sports teams and like there's who's the most underrated or underappreciated players. I think Ethan has to take that mantle. I think secretly Ethan is probably the best or like in the top five of, of all the Doomsday players out there um, and doesn't get enough credit. But anyways, I think Ethan uh, was running Relic and then like as an answer to Endurance and kind of pawned it off on Max and Max ran it and um, and now I'm running it and other people too. And it's just like, this card really s somewhat solves the endurance problem, at least, like, not 100%, but but, but a, a, a good amount of the time. So, if you're up against, like, I don't know, like, elves or whatever, and obviously it's not going to work if they can just, it, like, untap kill you, but if they, if they have kept a, a game state in a hand that has, like, one or two endurances and are, like, banking on that to... to to, to beat you and you make a fast uh, doomsday then like plumping down down relic is just super super strong uh you instantly get to exile the doomsday from your graveyard i mean if they want to endurance you in response to that then that's probably fine for you and if not then like you you can just like take it slow if if time allows it or if not you know you just start cycling uh, Street Wraiths and Edge of Autumns, and if at any point they have Endurance, you can exile everything, and you just gotta make sure that Oracle isn't the bottom card, because obviously the Relic draws a card, but I've been really impressed so far. Um, other than that, I decided to double down on the Anti-Delver tech with, with Shieldred, and add a second Cavern of Souls, because I think, like, versus Delver, if this card resolves in, in one of the first three turns, it almost doesn't matter what else is going on you're gonna win um and i don't mind her at all versus several combo decks in the format like sneak and show and doomsday mirrors and having the extra cavern is is also very very decent there you might notice how there are no removal spells or bounce spells and i think like for me at least in this sort of like turbo-ish shell that's fine I don't mind if I lose the the second game to Death and Taxes because they managed to sneak in like a Deafening Silence into a Spirit of the Lab or whatever, then that's fine. I feel confident I'm going to win the third game. And not being able to bounce or remove something... I mean, we, we have these Force of Negations to, to help us combat like Blood Moons and Trinisphere and whatever. And I'm okay with the like being on the side of variance the couple of times that it comes up where, where they sneak one through and it ends up mattering. All right, enough uh, babbling on my part. I'm going to jump into a league and see how we go. All right, on the play for round number one. Let's see how we go. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's keep this. We could do, like, uh, consider now. And if we draw... Doomsday, we get to Doomsday, but I think it's probably a bit more prudent to to pass the turn and see what we're up against. If we're up against Charles on one, which is like one of the sort of worst case scenarios type things, then that's, you know, at least we get to consider and we have like some rituals here that lets us play around that. But it looks as though we're up against lands. Okay. Um, and they have port. Like normally I would consider an end of turn here but that lets them tap our i guess basic island which i'm gonna fetch out here 
Is that something we want to... I think actually I am going to consider here, and then I can consider one more time in response to their report. Um, yeah, let's put that into the yard. Oh, Lindell Vault, that's kind of cool. That makes me feel like I probably don't want to consider here because I am going to consider as a response them tapping the the island. I'm not consider, I mean I'm going to Lindell's Vault. At least I think so, right? Well, let's see. Yeah, no, I th think I am. Let's see. Okay, there's a wasteland. So they're going to port the island, and I'm going to Lindell's Vault in response. I'm going to get the swamp here. And I think probably I'm going to not dooms. No, maybe I am supposed to doomsday. Well, we're, we're going to pay life. I'm going to put these in any order. There's a doomsday. I'm not going to pay life. That's interesting. The brainstorm kind of lets us do all sorts of things here. Um, I think I'm going to actually take the brainstorm. And see what land they port next turn. I mean, so far they're not really doing a lot of stuff otherwise. I kind of like the dark ritual that was underneath there as well. So if we can like brainstorm off of the land they tap, especially if like they tap the, they might go ahead and tap the swamp to be honest. In which case, that's also pretty good. Hmm. What's the score here? Dark Depths, okay. I wonder what they tap. They tap the swamp. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's fine. Okay, so we can brainstorm into like the only thing we basically have to worry about now is a duress sorry not dress sorry <laughs> dress is on top uh is a an endurance if they haven't if they if there was not a card called endurance we would just win um just win here um is there a way we can do that regardless so let's see let's like we can like dark like cabal writ crack both petals so we get five mana. So we would have one, two, three plus three, that's six. We would spend three on Doomsday. We could uh brainstorm into like if we brainstorm we have two mana floating. We brainstorm into Thoughtseize. How much? How many cards are in our graveyard at that point? Like the Doomsday and the Brainstorm, is that it? And we we grab like a Thoughtseize and some Cycler, like a Cycler and LED kind of thing. Um, so we LED 
We discard deep analysis. Yeah, I think I think there's a line here. Um, let's say blue and black here. Okay, so let's grab a Thoughtseize, grab LED, Thassa, and like two edges. How does that work? So we brainstorm into Thoughtseize. Why did I put a petal in there? That was supposed to be LED. Uh, and that's in the graveyard. Yeah, sure. Okay, that's why. So we brainstorm into Thoughtseize LED Edge. We put back, um, I suppose, Consider and... What was it? Thoughtseize LED Edge. And consider and Edge. And we so the pile is thassa consider edge edge thassa's on the bottom and then we thoughtsies then we led deep analysis draw consider edge how much mana is left at that point we have we won't have the blue we'll have the three blue from three blue we can't cast the consider then, right? Maybe if the second edge is a, a petal, how does that work? So we cast brainstorm, we draw LED, thought sees, and edge. We put back edge and consider. We thought sees. We crack LED for triple blue. We have one black and three blue. And we cast deep analysis for the black and one of the blue. So we have two blue left. And we cast, yeah, I think that works. So let's put Thassa on the bottom, pedal, maybe the other way around. Pedal, Thassa. And then these three, it won't matter because we'll brainstorm into them. What have I done to do this where it like asks me to pass priority every time? Okay, so let's put back um, consider and edge. And let's thought seize them. Hopefully they don't have two endurance. Is this crop rotation? Okay. Not sure what they're getting here. They crop rotted the dark depths away. Sure. Okay, maybe that was the only non land card in their hand. Okay, so they had nothing. Um, uh, let's take the pithing needle. Remember to use the black mana. Okay, so they concede. So we were gonna draw consider edge and then cast consider and draw edge. Edge draws, hmm. Maybe that wouldn't have worked, actually, come to think of it. Anyways, we got there. No, 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 I would have, it, it would have worked. We would have uh, drawn, like, considered into the pedal and etched into the Thassa's Oracle. Never mind. Okay, versus lands. I like the relic a lot. I think opposition agent 
like is promising, but probably at the end of the day is only, yeah, I don't know. It, it's a maybe card, right? Because it gets crop rotation and Ursa Saga. But Ursa Saga, like if we get to the point that then they, they're going to have like two, three, three, or four, four, or five fives. And then the fact that we get to find like a Mox Diamond isn't really going to help a lot. They probably have like several sphere resistances. So I think maybe those are better. What happens if we add these five cards? Which ones would we want to, to ditch? The Jeresses don't seem good. Do we need the deep analysis? Maybe not. Like going through the graveyard seems a little bit sus suspect. The Limdal's Vault, I would probably look to cut like personal tutor if this was personal tutor. But Limdal's Vault being at instant speed, finding like, I guess we're not running like Silver Bullet answers, so maybe Limdal's Vault isn't that, isn't that great. And let's cut a consider, seeing as we caught the deep analysis. How many blue cards are we at? We're at 4, 8, 12, the one is Thassa. 16, 22, 21, if you discount Thassa. And we don't want Shoulder It. They're like, they have Caracas. Um, yeah, I think this is fine. Hey, look at that. I mean, Sphere Resistance gets us here, but aside from that, this is... Uh, you know, about as good as you can hope for. So let's go ahead and keep. All right, put and keep seven as well. Come on, no sphere, no sphere, no sphere. Yeah, sure, Pithing Yield, go ahead. Do your worst. Strewgrath, that's a fair name. Oof, that's not the worst. Um, how much am I gonna regret having two fetch lines in hand here? Maybe not a lot, actually. Because I think I, I do like putting in the basic island. I, I certainly want the uh, relic, want the Thassa, want the cavern. What else? Like Edge of Autumn, probably? All right. Let's put the island on the bottom, then the cavern, the Thassa. I think I'm just going to draw the relic and see how we go. All right, second grove. I think I will counter like, oh, uh, so they're gonna grove for like for wasteland here, which honestly I think is probably fine. Would kind of suck for them to like surgical extract uh, the underground sea here, but I mean, so be it. So let's play this. Yeah, that's right. And um, probably I will like activate it now. Oops, no, not like that. I'm gonna exile. Yeah, I'm gonna exile the Doomsday here. And if they wanna evoke uh, uh like a, an endurance here, then I'm a okay with that. Yeah, okay. I mean, this could pay off for them, but I don't think it will. Like, this is going to add a couple of turns. But we have the Force, and we have, like, the Relic to keep further Endurances from being relevant. And we even get to, like, get use of our second fetch here.
so the bottom of our library is Doomsday and Underground Sea in an unknown order. Then Snow Covered Island, uh, Th Cavern, and Thassa, I think. So we'll be drawing the Thassa here. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm going to make them. I'm going to make, make them remove a cart. Why not? Maybe they'll remove Wasteland and like Loam will be worse or whatever. Okay, so next card down is... Next card down is uh, what you call it. The, um, the Cavern. Then I, f I can Fetch Fetch. Yeah, so I'm going to draw the cavern, and then I'm going to put Thassa's... Then I'm going to fetch a couple of times and put Thassa's Oracle on, on the stack. And the last card will be Doomsday. And if they Endurance, we'll just remove... I suppose, like, if they have Endurance plus Red Blast... No, does that even do it? Okay. So let's uh let's get these lands out of here. Play the cavern. So we can also just like edge of autumn to draw the last card. If for some reason we want to keep the relic around. But, I mean, they have three cards. They could have double endurance plus a green card, but I still think we win. Because then the deck becomes three cards big and we can, like, relic plus edge. Relic, you're my new best friend. Okay. I wonder what is in the opponent's hand because they are uh, they're really in the tank here. All right. Here is uh, Thassa. What what you got? So, if their last two cards in hand are, like, Endurance and a green card, what happens? What happens if I, if I Relic in response and then they Endurance in response? My deck becomes three cards deep. Then I, Endurance resolves, I draw a card with Relic. My card, my deck is two cards deep. I draw one with Etch and I still lose. So what happens if I just draw with edge now? And then they endurance. It's the same problem, right? Then I can't exile with, with relic because I'll draw from an empty library and lose. Um, I think we have to hope they don't have endurance. That they, what they have is a second, is a second like red blast. I'm going to exile here to draw a card and hope they don't have endurance. Ah, oh, screw me. Um, okay, that happens. Okay, so they had double endurance plus blast. That feels rough. Okay, so this draws a card. Well, I mean, it draws Doomsday, but I don't have another black source, right? Uh, what was the other card? That was a fetch land. So my my deck is like two fetch lands. Um, yep, yeah, there you have it. All right, too bad. 
Let's uh, see if we can do one better for game number three. I don't think I changed anything for sideboards. That was an inter interesting stack. So, like, if they had had double red blast, then it wouldn't have mattered. And if they would have had double endurance, it wouldn't have mattered. But the fact that they had, like, endurance and then endurance with red blast, that, that kind of killed us. All right, let's choose to be on the play. And yeah, let's let's keep this. It's a little bit annoying that we don't have a blue card for the force in case they have like a, a scary turn one play. But um, let's 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 see here. This is still turn two doomsday if if they don't have exactly sphere, I think. Or like pithing needle on polluted delta, that would be kind of annoying. Exploration, yeah, can't uh, can't stop that right now. Ursa Saga, sure. All right, dark ritual, huh? How does that work? Seeing as we don't have, um, seeing as we don't have that that card. What am I thinking about? The um, the ideas bound. Well, they don't have red mana, so let let's we don't need the cavern. Let's say that we go polluted delta crack, dark ritual doomsday, sack edge, draw brainstorm, cast brainstorm off pedal. Our hand is force of will. Cavern of souls. So we draw, um, we draw, how much mana do we have on tap at that point? We have one, we have the, the Scalding Tarn on tap. So we draw Thassa, um, Petal, blue card for force. We put back, we put back Cavern, Oh gosh, that's awkward. That's that's almost there, right? Hmm. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We have three mana here. Three becomes five with dark ritual. Becomes two with doomsday edge into brainstorm one floating. So we brainstorm and draw the second mana we need to cast the Thassa, the Thassa itself. And then like what? We, we, we don't get to keep the, f yeah. Nah. That's so annoying. Maybe we just build us another slow pile with like, um, another slow pile with, with, with the relic, honestly. Maybe that's not even that bad. Um, or we just hope they don't have fucking endurance. <laughs> um, how about how about brainstorm, like dark ritual brainstorm. Edge for brainstorm. We have like two mana left. These these two cards are over here. Brainstorm and, oh, edge into brainstorm. Brainstorm draw. Thassa a land and blue card, and we put back the cavern. But then we can't put the add. No, no, doesn't work. I feel like we can we can afford to to actually do this. Watch me lose the game, but we'll try. Okay, so again, I do think we want the relic, we want the Thassa, and then basically we want cyclers. Um, 
Is that is that correct? So what if we like So we'll, we'll like they will get to two counters here and then the next on their next turn they will get to get like a pithing needle and name relic which is a problem. I mean, I could also just fucking go for it now and hope they don't have endurance. Is that is that nuts? Maybe that's what I'm supposed to do. All right, maybe but they probably play they play for endurance, right? That's the thing right now. And they kept a hand that didn't have like a sphere, but it had like a fast saga opener. Oh, this is tough. Tough, tough, tough. Mm. Do I have... I don't have deep analysis in the deck anymore. And the problem is, like, as soon as I pass a turn, they're going to play land and pass. And then they'll keep open, they'll have open red blast. So I think I actually need to either play really slow and hope for the the relic, but that gets mucked up by the. Mm. Then actually, maybe if I like edge now for the relic. How about that? I edge for relic now and play it, and then next turn I'll have th I'll have two mana, plus the the cavern. I think that actually kind of works. So I'll edge into Relic. Then I'll draw Edge. And I'll edge into Street Wraith into the, 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 the. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I like that. That that, that actually works. Um, so I'll put, let's put Thassa on the bottom. And then like uh, some of these cards. I'll draw the relic. I have to hope they don't like answer my uh, my lotus petal. Um, and maybe I'm supposed to like activate relic now to like not not pay mana, but just tap it to to get a card out of the deck. Did I just bury myself because I I put Thassa on the bottom? No, I think I'm fine, right? I'll I'll cycle all the way through. And then they'll have to endurance in response. Yeah, no, I think. Okay. Can they crop rot the dark depths away? Is there anything scary? Do they have like a Thrain Foundry here? I mean, that's basically endurance. Not that. What am I talking about? Thrain Foundry is an artifact. No, uh, I was thinking about the uh, the 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 desert. What's it called? But that needs blue mana, anyways. The Ripnu, the Ipnu Rivale. Okay. Like just raw dog pithing needle here would be kind of rough. Oh, okay. Never mind. Doesn't matter. Right. So I think I do tap this here. And like if they, if, if they, if, okay, they don't. I was going to say if like if, if they insurance here, then that's probably fine. Okay. So let's, uh, let's cycle here. Oh no, hang on. Did I just lose here? Because, how does this work? If they endurance in response, like, if I, 
Oh uh, yeah, I think I might. I I might have lost. I'm not sure. I I'm honestly getting lost in my own sort of thoughts here. Um, I think I might lose here if we if we if we go to town this way. Because if they endurance us in response to Oracle, then we can't actually. We, we can't relic because there there are no cards in the deck. I should have left a card on the bottom, but we do we would get to draw like the or we get to win, so that's that's great. Maybe they didn't have endurance, but we would have um, been able to exile the relic to draw one of hopefully a lot of cyclers. And if 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 the the two snow covered lands were on the bottom, yeah. Anyways, hmm. I definitely played that suboptimally, but but got away with it. All right, that was a very long game one. Let's see how, uh, or round one, let's see how round two goes. All right, round number two on the play. And I mean, yeah. I'm going to... Um, I'm going to turn one Duress here off of Basic Swamp. And... And see see how how we do. And maybe they'll think we're in like ad nauseum tendrils. Ooh, okay. Are they able to get turn on hull breacher? No, right. No, they don't have any mana ramp right now. I can take the land or shadow spear. It won't matter. I'll I'll take the land. Yeah, we basically have to fade them drawing a, a force of will or a chalice. But no, no, chalice wouldn't even do it because they wouldn't chalice zero here. Okay, so they go island and shadow spear. Okay. Well, I mean, you drew force, you win. If you didn't, you, you you lose. All right, so we will draw, like, we will edge into consider. We'll consider deep analysis to the, to the graveyard and draw petal, not petal, sorry, LED. And LED draws this petal and Thassa. All right, so pedal, Thassa, LED, deep anal, and consider. Cast consider, put deep analysis into the graveyard. Okay. Right, so, hmm, interesting. Haven't really played this matchup um, with t Turbo recently. Like, Shouldred is kind of interesting. I think Mystic, Mystical Dispute is, is pretty good because it dodges Chalice and, like, fights, uh, on, like, an appealing fight versus, uh, Force of Will. And can also, like, nab a, um, an Emery. Opposition agent only really tackles their their Ursa sagas, and their sagas, like the tutoring, is not really what's the problem there. It's the like six six or seven sevens that that the sagas leave behind. There's a world where we we want Emrakul and Sheldog Isle. I mean that's certainly not beyond the 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 realm of possibilities but they don't really play anti thassa hate they don't really play like dress down or like torpor orb or something so <sighs> i think these these five cards and then maybe the second cameron for the children are kind of interesting i think we cut the limdul's vault and the led and like two of the cyclers and the deep analysis, and probably one consider. 
I think that's that's actually kind of reasonable. So we keep all the discard, even though like Chalice is a thing. You could argue for like Force of Negation to fight Chalice, but I I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna try this. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pass on this. I'm not gonna lie. They even they can even chalice on one here and it doesn't matter. That looks like what's what's happening here. Yep. And again, they're not gonna chalice on zero because they're they have like a million zero drops. This pedal is a little bit concerning if like they have fluster storm. But I mean so be it. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Doesn't matter if we fetch or what. Probably not. I don't think it's going to have an impact here. Oh, okay. Let's get Cavern and let's get some Cyclers. And Thassa. And do we want anything else? Mm. The Chalice is kind of... Yeah, maybe we'll grab like a Mystical Dispute. I'm not sure what else to get, to be honest. So, like, we will draw Mystical Dispute and pass. Or I suppose we could just, like, cycle all the way through to, to Thassa and just not put her through the cavern. Yeah, let's put cavern on the bottom. And um, put Thassa and then the Cyclers and then Mystical Dispute and stuff. And we can just, like, if we feel like the forces can hold, we can just go for the, the Thassa next turn. They're unlikely to have removal. There's a Saga. That's not going to do anything until next turn. They had Hull Breacher game one, by the way. Narset. That's uh, a bit unpleasant. Though, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to cycle. And cycle. The Saga is not going to poop out uh, the Constructs until it's too late anyways. And we'll let them have Narset. And if they find, like, LED days on doing whatever, then we, we, we're going to be able to, like, especially if we get a turn, we'll be able to both Force and Mystical Dispute. LED, sure. Alright, it's go time. And they have to beat Mystical Dispute and Force. So, if they find, like, uh, yeah, uh, what's, what, what is it called? Um, Echo of Eons? Then I just Force and it's over. If they find, like, Oh, another LED. Interesting. I'm not sure what else they could have here. You'd have to imagine they kind of know that it's go time. Oh. No, there's only one echo. What's this? Nimble. Oh, it's that, that stifle when you cycle. Interesting. Um, yeah. Like, if they had a second Echo, that'd be kind of scary. Okay. 
could have a 2-2. Two -two. I mean, that's fine, because they had the mana, so I'm, I'm not, like, littling them or anything. But All right, cool, 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 cool. All right, beat, beat the Echo Narset Stompy deck. Um, I hesitate to call this 8-cast. I didn't see any of the, the thought cast. Um, but they probably have them. But uh, anyways, all right, off to round number three. All right, uh, round number three on the play once more. Wow, we're getting lucky. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep these uh, seven cards. They seem kind of kind of reasonable. I think I'm going to play the Delta. It gives us the highest chance of like casting a Doomsday off of like Black Bruising Land black producing land on turn turn two if for some reason that's kind of what ends up happening probably won't be but we'll see tropical island okay that's interesting i'm not sure what this is um i think there's wasteland out of this deck i'm gonna risk it Um, hmm. we could put deep analysis back in order to be able to consider it away and then like draw two cards. I don't hate that. Let's put back uh deep analysis and duress. Right, I'm like I'm I'm getting like Aluren vibes, but I don't know that Aluren would play Noble Hierarch. And the Delta, yeah, this is this is kind of perplexing. Noble hierarch, okay. Right on. All right, let's uh, let's cast consider here. No one counters consider. Put that into the yard, draw that. So if we deep analysis here, we will have seven, eight cards in hand, which is actually no good. So I don't actually hate duressing here. Maybe grab that Aluren if it's in their hand, if my hunch is right. Wow, okay, I was like way off. What is this? So I'm going to take Narset here and just stare at these four cards in bewilderment with this Ignoble Hierarch. So they can like Uro front half now, which is good for them. There's Tega. Yep. Obviously not going to fight over that. And then what, like, beat face for two? Their hand is force prismatic ending and hope, hopefully for them another blue card. We take two. We're going to take three more next turn, I think, and draw the two cards with the deep analysis. Actually, do we brainstorm first? No. No, I think we, we, we cast this first. Ugh. This is not very exciting. Are you kidding me? This is terrible. I, I feel like I just lost the game, honestly. Um, I was going to say, are we going to give away that we're Doomsday, but they already know. So let's put back these two and discard Thassa. But yeah, that was god awful. How do you whiff on that many cards? Jeez. Let's hope they don't have, like, I don't know, like Pajuka Bog or something. So I'm going to I'm going to force this because we can't like I think afford to to try and race 
to try and race Uro here. And they might force back, then I'll force back because that is still true. And then next turn I'll like cycle twice. Wow. Okay, so their hand is force ending and the land they picked up. I still think I kind of have to force here. Which is obviously terrible if they actually do have the, the force. Also because like we're just refilling their graveyard here. Um, so the exalt force. I won't pay for days. And I'll force again and their hand is land plus prismatic ending. But we're all obviously in a in a pretty bad spot here. So we go down to nine, we can cycle twice, go down to five, then we're at an effective uh, three. I still think we probably have to. Brainstorm is not a card I'm prepared to complain about at this point. But I am prepared to complain about that. Okay, that was that was bad. Okay, so we're up against some sort of four color control deck. I think um, the the Emrakul is decent enough. The, the disputes are pretty good. I think the deep analysis is not good or the LED or the two cyclers. Probably the question is if like, is Limdal's Vault, is the card disadvantage worth it? Is there anything else we want to put in here? Like, Shouldered, if, in case they don't have, like, actively have a removal spell in hand, it's pretty good. But I think Shouldered is pretty much on the radar. Mm, I think this is fine. I mean, they're an Uro deck. It's not unreasonable to expect them to also have, like, uh, Wasteland. But being the four-color sort of pile, probably not three or four, but maybe one or two. Uh, hmm. I'm gonna mulligan this. I'm gonna keep. Uh, put back basic island. I'm gonna play Scalding Tarn here. I I want to save my ponder for turn two. With the uh, you know, the real risk of them just going volcanic island. Go, jeez. Okay. Let's let's pass. This is so bad. This is like just the one thing that I didn't want. I should have pondered on turn one, you know, if I really anticipated this because they obviously have the the thing here. Okay. I'll get to have a look. I expect them to have like pyroblast. Oof, spell pierce. Right, okay. Could have played around that. But I didn't. Oops. I'm, I'm going to cycle here. Another land. Hmm. They don't shuffle. I mean, at this point, it feels pretty obvious what's going on. What's going on is exactly what's going on, right? And I have one blue relevant spell, and, I, and they clearly have, like, or are at least representing, like, red mana. And now they have a three drop that they can protect with uh, their Pyroblast, which is pretty terrible for us. So, gee, I, I don't know. I feel like we probably have lost this game. Mm. I do I go for anything here? Nope, I let them have this. Force of will. Nice. 
And meanwhile, I'm just drawing all my lands. Yeah, this is looking like a bit of a lost cause here. Another force of will. Nice. <laughs> I probably could just concede here. I'm going to take one more draw step, I think. But they have like everything they want, and I have, have stranded. And this all could have been a bit different if I had pondered on turn one, which is like really interesting. All right. Kind of feel like I could have done more there, but yeah. All right. Two and one. Let's go for round number four. All right. Round number four. Remaining on the play, which is quite quite the feat here, against Hello Newton of Elves fame. I'm going to choose to be on the play. Um, yeah, I'm going to keep. And just play the least doomsday of fetches and pass. So I think I'm going to end of turn brainstorm, honestly. Because it lets me, like, if I find a dark ritual... Or a Cabal Ritual or a Lotus Petal. It lets me get up to shenanigans here on my third turn. Which, because I'm on the play, I think is fine. Uh, second edge. Is that... I think that's good enough. Yeah. Um, put back these... I mean, I do. I this hand loses to. It loses to endurance, but I still think it's worth the the punt, right? A fiend artisan, sure. All right, so they're setting off for the next turn. Um, let's see here. No, we want to pay. Li well, yes, we want to pay life. Any order. And we want to pay life. Any order. Let's keep this. Um, so we can like draw the Doomsday. Wraith into Dark Ritual. And then yeah. I think that's probably fine. We'll be at. So we're at 17. We will fetch down to 16. Edge. Oh, sorry, Street Wraith down to 14, be at 7. Yeah, that's fine. Put the chosen cards on top of your library right Yes or no? Okay. All right. Let's um let's fetch here. So we'll edge of autumn into consider consider into um Consider the deep analysis in the yard. Draw the line side diamond. Cast deep analysis. Draw uh, Thassa and Daze. And beat Endurance if they misplay and play last. Is there another way to, to beat this? What if we, like, Edge of Autumn into... Into another Edge of Autumn into a Brainstorm? And then brainstorm into Thassa, 
pedal days. Put back these two lands. I mean, that also gives them, like, if they just play the, the Endurance at the right point in time, then, then that's fine. H how would that work? Let's see here. Maybe I actually prefer that. No, we need the days. Uh, we don't need the deep analysis. We need the t one pedal and a brainstorm and another cycler. So we edge into Street Wraith, Street Wraith into Brainstorm, Brainstorm into Day's Petal, Thassa. We have one mana available. We put back these two lands. Yeah. Um, so, Petal, Thassa, Day's. Go like that. This is where they their last chance to endurance. Unless they have two, of course, which is not impossible. Looks as though we're golden. Yep. All right, cool. So versus elves, the opposition agent is is decent tech. And the relic is good. I don't think Shouldered is good enough. Like, because, like, it, it doesn't stop their visionary shenanigans. It just means it costs them two life. And they don't have, like, cantrips, like Brainstorm or whatever. So I think we want these three cards. I think um, getting rid of the dresses is kind of fine the deep analysis is that it is that really it do we want like a single force of negation in lieu of something else here like one consider i think that's probably fine like force of negation randomly lets us like protect of a uh like a doomsday or something on turn zero this is obviously a really really juicy hand i'm gonna keep and I wonder if they, like, thought seizes here, turn one, if they take the Dark Ritual. This is a little bit awkward. Okay, there's Shepard. Okay, and... The, in, they revealed the Beseju with the, the, the Once Upon a Time. So, how quickly can they kill me here? We can't, like, the force of negation is just off. Um, if they don't have endurance, we just, we, ju we can just win right now. Uh... Am I supposed to go for that? I think I actually kind of like trying. I mean, they don't always have endurance, right? So we cycle into pedal, cast, brainstorm, draw, uh, consider, cycler, LED, and then Thassa's on the bottom. So we we cycle into pedal, cast pedal, play brainstorm, draw, consider LED cycler. Last card is Thassa. Put back opposition agent or another random card, and then consider, and then cycle into consider crack LED. Play consider, bin the card we put second from top, draw Thassa. So this beats um, beats everything but endurance. Um. Put back up, 
info agent and consider. Draw the consider bin. Yep. And last card, Thassa. Do you have the, the endurance? All right, that's fair. I mean, reasonable to expect them to have kept something that interacted, but at the same time, I think like it's a non-cantrip deck. They're left less than fifty percent likely to have it, so I don't know. I feel I feel okay having made that choice, but obviously it didn't pay off. All right, let's um, let's try for game three on the play. I'm gonna keep. <laughs> um, yeah, so this feels like a relic hand, and probably a hand that involves opposition agent. So, all right, let's do that here. Let's um, fetch a land and oppo agent seems good. Thassa seems good. Is there like a... Uh, is there a world where we want Thoughtseize? Let's see, we draw Relic. And then we fetch the island. Or rather, we draw Relic, play it. Then we untap, we draw Oppo Agent to protect ourselves. And then... Maybe the thought sees is kind of meh. Maybe we'd rather be able to play and crack a second land. Yeah, I think that's that's actually fair. So let's put back the two lands on the bottom. Thassa, Oppo, Agent, Relic. Am I supposed to draw the oppo agent just in case they have like turn two natural order? I think so. I don't think relic matters. Uh, am I supposed to play the pedal? Might make them reconsider something like that. No, I think I play the pedal just in case they have like discard and go for that. I'm not sure it will end up mattering. This way, like, Oppo Agent also just, like, lets us, like, get a fetch land kind of thing. And they have to discard. Okay. Okay, so that's a little bit annoying. It means we can both Relic and Oppo Agent on, not next turn, but the turn after. We will be able to just like get a fetch land here, but it will cost us like randomization uh, from fetching, so we won't draw the, the, the relic. Which is maybe still fine, but I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to give up this opportunity. So there's a really like weirdo thing here where I'm supposed to someone I, I wasn't aware of this, but someone from my LGS uh, explained it to me. You control the, an opponent when they're searching. That means I'm also supposed to see their hand, but Magic Online doesn't let me do that. 
which is kind of annoying. Okay, so I get to, maybe I'll, I'd like to draw a card. Let's see, how many, in, oh, all four Endurance is in the deck. Would you look at that? Um, no Elvish, Elvish Visionary, really? That's uh, really interesting. I can't do anything with this card, right? Sacrifice it, search another, search your library for creature. I actually could use this. Like I will pay black, oops. I will tap this guy, play, pay black and then pay two. And then I'll sacrifice this guy and I'll search my library for is that the best the the best thing I can do? Yeah, I guess so. Oh, ah, never mind. I have to I have to fucking cast this guy. I thought I, for a second I thought he just came into play. Never mind. But it's nice to know that if I just draw a uh, Thassa here, I I'm good. And I do so. Wow, Opposition Agent, that's quite the card. GG's opponent. All right, cool. Uh, three and one, let's see how we do for the last round. All right, round number five. Completely unreasonably, I have been put on the on the draw here. Um, This is an interesting end. I think I'm going to keep opponent Mulligan to six. This... Oracle is not looking too good, and like no way to, no fetch land or anything, and no brainstorm. But I, I think this is still like a, an excusable keep. Uh oh, looks like we're up against eight casts. I'm gonna force of will a chalice here. If that's what ends up happening, underground sea is revealed from their Ursa's wobble. They play another Mistress Bobble. Interesting. Choose not to crack it. Okay. Well, fetch land was not the worst pickup here. Mm. Don't think we need these. I, you know, I could play out LED here, but I don't think there's much of a reason for that. They play like, uh, they play all zeros, so like Chalice and Zero is not a thing. It would, and I don't think this is an Echo of Eons deck. All right. Draw a bunch of cards and they take their turn. All right, you got just more like churning through your deck, or are we doing anything? Emery, okay. Emery is obviously like going to give them long term advantage here. And they found a chalice, which is also kind of nasty for us. So. Yeah, maybe I'm supposed to, to, to force Emery. I think we take the land here and then just go for the Doomsday, to be honest, uh, next turn. And what I really want here is a Cycler. I didn't get it. All right. So we will cast Doomsday next turn. All, you know, everything going to plan here. What's this? Six mana? Is this... Oh, wow. Is this like a chalice for three? That's 
a superb. I mean, I'm going to force and hope they don't have force back. Okay, they didn't. That's very well sort of red on their part. We draw a second dupe say, which is just useless. Okay, so, um, all right, look, they didn't have force right now. I'm going to just stock up on cyclers here. And put cavern on the bottom. Depending on what happens next turn, I might may or may not just go for it. Seeing as I have the Thassa in hand. Alright. Like they they may or may not go for like a cavern on uh not a cavern, a chalice on two here. If they do and don't present a threat, then I'm happy. I mean, if they make a chalice on two, I basically have to wait anyways for, uh, oh, excuse me, for the, um, for the Cavern of Souls, but yeah, we'll see. We shall see. All right, they do go for the chalice. Yeah, you make you make it a two and hope I don't have camera souls in the deck. That's fine, uh, as long as they don't present like a, a a threat here, I'm I'm happy. Threat or like a hull breacher or an arset effect. All right, so I I pass here, and basically like. Am fine. Whatever they do, I I can cycle through. I can cycle through. Sure. Thoughtcasts. I suppose like if they have Holbreacher, it could potentially be a bit of a problem here. Thought monitor, sure. Or like, what? What? Halberd should be a problem. Like, let's say I wait until I get my draw step. I draw the second street wraith. I cycle one the halberd. I cycle the second and draw edge. I cycle edge. I draw edge. I cycle edge. I draw cavern. So probably not actually. This is Kappa Cannon year. I mean, I see a lot of posturing here, but, you know, I feel like I'm Indiana Jones, and they're like that guy with the turban and the, the scimitar, and I just, yeah, I'm just going to pull out my gun. There you go. Wait. Could I have done that last turn? Oh my god, how... I'm too tired. Jeez. <laughs> I think I'd, I could have just gone for that last turn. Holy moly. Well, who... You know, what? what what's the turn between friends? Honestly, opponent. Yep. All right, so this is regular eight cast, and I do think I want the uh, the Shieldreds here, and the second cavern, and the mystical disputes, and I will, I'll give up the L um, LDV, the LED, a couple of the cyclers. 
probably what will it be like one juror one consider maybe for context and just to like make excuses for myself I did just get home from like a night out with some friends and I'm a little bit roasted I'd like to think that is why I am making suboptimal plays, not because I just choose to make them, because I'm not, you know, better than that. All right, anyways, they mulligan to six. I'm not going to give up this, even if they have the chalice. Don't have the chalice? Okay, they don't have the chalice. All right, Oof, I, I even draw the force. Brutal. Okay. Um, I mean, I am going to go for it here. They would need double force. All right, let's, um, so let's go like this and we can fetch. We need to pass the turn twice, basically, maybe. Grabbing the street wraith is is an issue here. No, we we do need it because we don't have we don't have uh, two two of those uh, two edges. Yeah, I think this is fine. So we'll draw street wraith. Pass. They'll make a two two, and then they'll make another thing, and then we'll draw edge and. We'll just win. We'll street wraith into pedal. Sorry, no. Street wraith into Thassa. Edge into cavern. And we will have plumped down a land in the meantime. So, the fetch. Underground sea in the bottom. Cavern. Thassa. Edge. Wraith. Pass. And we'll get to dress them. In the meantime. We just need them to not have, like... A massive amount of pressure on our hit like hit points on the next turn so we'll take one from force one from fetch two from street wraith we're at an effective six this is th yeah that's fine it means we don't dress them but i mean so what okay so they would need to deal us six damage somehow this turn in order to uh, to win. Oh, fuck. Fuck. I clicked through this. No. Okay. Phew. Jeez Louise. Um, so let's just cycle here, honestly. Okay, so... Yeah, let's cycle... Draw the, um, the, what is this, Thassa. And we can fetch for the underground sea that's left in the deck. And then Pithing Neal won't matter. Yep. Yeah. Street Wraith, yeah, that's fine. Another Saga. Yeah, yeah. I still have blue mana floating, that's funny. I could <laughs> I could have dazed, make make them pay their uh their pedal, but I don't know, I'd rather have the force I guess.
All right. What you got? All right. Sweet. Yeah, four and one. Um, kind of bummed that I lost that four color control matchup. I think like. I don't think I covered myself in glory in, in in terms of how I played, and yeah, I don't know, like that. That I don't know. It is what it is. I I think all all in all, I I um like I really like this deck honestly, and if this is a, a personal tutor, a Limbless Vault, or like another pre I don't think I massively feel like it's gonna like influence your results could be wrong i just um i feel like this is like this is pretty solid honestly this is kind of where you want to be at some somewhere along these lines if you want to play the quote-unquote turbo and it's funny like we've abandoned ideas inbound here completely um which i don't think is getting enough press uh so to speak like um I, I, you could even you could go without deep analysis, like if you make the pile, if you have so so I think like what I always wanted and what I always used um, used ideas and bound for it was when I had a hand that was brainstorm and blank card with access to one blue mana, right, and 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 so you win from here. This was like the most common turn one win. And the way I did it with Ideas and Bound, or the way you did it with Ideas and Bound, was just to have like um, Ideas and Bound and a Petal and an LED and a Cycler and Thassa. And that would sort of roll right off the tongue. But you don't need to, right? What you need is to have. Um, so let's say you have two Cyclers. I consider an LED and Thassa and your hand is still like brainstorm with like a blank card in hand and access to a mana then all you need are these cards so you'll brainstorm and draw LED street wraith and consider you'll put back your blank card in hand and then consider on top your hand is now LED and Street Wraith. So you play LED, you cycle Street Wraith, crack LED, draw, consider, cycle away the blank card. Or not cycle, but like consider away the blank card, draw the second cycler. You have two blue remaining and you cycle into Thassa. So I like, I, I really dig that we're trying to work around having like bad cards in the deck and like Ideas Unbound is not the most impressive card. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure what else to, to really say. I, I think, like, I think Turbo is, like, Turbo Doomsday, or just, like, whatever, fast-ish Doomsday is, is, like, really good. And you won't, you won't go completely off the mark playing something like this. And maybe it's better to have, like, um, maybe it's better to have two, uh, or three or four personal tutor. But I think you can easily play this deck without that card and still enjoy success. All right. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you had fun enjoying the, the good plays and the misplays and all the, all the plays. And I will be back with some more Legacy. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.